In 1878, Edward Muybridge created his renowned 360-degree, 20 by 24-inch glass plate panorama of San Francisco. 130 years later, James Doyle and Tom Pope travelled back, and with the assistance of Tracy Storer, one of the leading experts in mammoth plate photography, they recreated the panorama. San Francisco established itself from a settlement to a metropolis in the 1850s simultaneous with the invention and development of photography. Within the city, Nob Hill became a site of historic importance in panoramic photography because of its topographical position. The earthquake of April 18, 1906 ranks as one of the most significant earthquakes of all time. The earthquake and subsequent fires raised the city to the ground, making Mybridge Panorama the final 360 degree photographic document of how the city was before the natural disaster. Bridge was born in Kingston and he obviously he did the majority of his work out in, in America um, but he did actually return to Kingston and he died in Kingston in 1904 um, just a few months prior to the museum being built but he was aware that around about the time um, near to his death that a, that a library was being built and then subsequently um, Carnegie who donated the money to actually build the library, decided to then donate more money to build a, a museum adjacent to the library. I mean, we're incredibly privileged to have one of the nine panoramas in the collection. Um, it, it shows a snapshot in time, and as, as Mybridge was famous for capturing you know, moments in time, he was a corona photographer. Um, for us, it sort of shows that it's almost a degree of that work, it's a variant on that work, you know, it's a snapshot of San Francisco at a time when it was very vibrant and moving and changing itself and he's just kind of, it's a really unique sort of snapshot in time of that period. Um, obviously it was before the 1906 quake so and it took on more significance after the earthquake but um, it was still I think, as far as my knowledge goes, incredibly well regarded in terms of a, a panoramic photograph or circuit. Um, I think there were 50 other panoramas of San Francisco taken previous to my bridges, but I still think this one is the most highly regarded. Socially, I guess in terms of social history aspect, it does reveal things about San Francisco that, you know, that is now lost to time, lost under the earth. Mybridge photographed his panorama from the highest point in the city at that time, the Belvedere of the Mark Hopkins mansion. The exact spot now rests somewhere near the elevator shaft on the sixth floor of the Mark Hopkins Intercontinental Hotel. Rephotographing from the precise same spot would be impossible, but the hotel was built on exactly the same location as the mansion, so in essence the location would be the same. James and Tom contacted Polaroid in the summer of 2007 with a proposal to use the largest Polaroid camera in the world. The reason for using instant Polaroid was to directly reference the size format that Mybridge had employed 130 years previous. Using Polaroid also meant that each photograph had to be immediately processed after being exposed, again referencing the wet plate process that Mybridge had employed. To use Polaroid, temperature conditions need to be regulated. Tracy designed what was termed a pizza oven, which was constructed from two cardboard boxes combined with a hairdryer, creating a constant temperature so that the Polaroids could be processed properly. As the camera had been strictly designed for the studio use in the 1960s, transporting the camera onto a roof exposed to direct sunlight was going to create problems in terms of light leaking in. To minimise this, a 10-foot black box of canvas had to be erected to limit the amount of light. Once the sun started to go down, the wind started to increase. This created another problem as the mammoth camera was being moved by the wind and subsequently the exposures would be blurred. The only solution available was that James, Tom and the assistant Todd had to stretch canvas in front of the camera trying to limit the amount of wind hitting the camera when the shutter was open.
Disorientation accompanies the experience of viewing 360 degree panoramas. In close proximity, they cannot be seen in their entirety at any one time, only gradually in a lateral sweep. Not only has a three-dimensional space been reduced to a two-dimensional plane, the idea of the 360 degree image is lost in the presentation of a linear sequence. To look at both panoramas is to look at time, not one moment, but several moments separated by long intervals. The act of seeing in several directions at once is simultaneous to looking at several moments at once. When we view the 2008 panorama of James and Tom, as well as surveying the whole city of San Francisco, we are also paradoxically viewing the whole day from light to night.